Baker. Police are on the scene. Both the audience and the cast have been told to leave. Police were seen cordoning off the area. No other details at the moment. Again, Britain is on heightened alert after the Manchester bombing has come down a tick, uh, but the nerves are still raw. Meanwhile, there's this. If all NATO members had spent just 2% of their GDP on defense last year, we would have had another $119 billion for our collective defense and for the financing of additional NATO reserves. Kind of smirking and snickering. Did you get that? As President Trump scolded the Europeans for not paying their fair share, what they said they were going to do. But maybe President Trump is getting the last laugh because he just tweeted the following quote, Many NATO countries have agreed to step up payments considerably, as they should. Money is beginning to pour in. NATO will be much stronger. Now, Gardner joins us, as well as Christy Setzer and Lee Carter. And Lee, uh, let me start with you. I don't think there has ever been a better example of European snobbiness from our perspective <laughs> and, and sort of ungratefulness for, for everything that, that we have done. Let's face it, NATO, I know they came to our aid after 9-11, and I'm grateful to them for that, but really we are there more for them than they are for us. I mean, there's no question. But, I mean, first of all, what were they laughing at? We don't even necessarily know. Is there something in their earpieces? Did somebody make a joke? So we don't necessarily know what they were laughing at. If they were laughing at the president or eye rolling at the president because he was calling them out, it's completely inappropriate. It's disrespectful. It's totally a snub saying that, you know, we don't, we're, we're not respecting the United States because Donald Trump is, in fact, the president of the United States. And we have, as you say, done so much for NATO, and they've already agreed to be paying for their fair share. So I think this is an absolute, if this is, in fact, that they were laughing at him, I think it's absolute disgrace. Well, and Niall, then there was the setting. This, the, the setting in which this took place is the new NATO building. Uh, it's hard to get an exact cost of the thing, but it probably cost around $1.5 billion uh, to, to create a, a bureaucracy, essentially. I don't know how much effort is going to go into defending the future of Europe or the free world by what they've constructed there in Brussels. Well, there's certainly no shortage of bureaucracy in Brussels, that's for sure. Uh, and uh, I have to agree that the, you know, the smirking uh, from some European leaders, especially the French president, the Belgian prime minister, the leader of Luxembourg as well, is absolutely uh, appalling. And I think Emmanuel Macron, the new French president, is behaving like a, a little schoolboy at the moment, uh, frankly, uh, extremely rude. Uh, while the French economy is sinking like the Titanic. Uh, and I think that there was a lot of disrespect on display there. It's important for European uh, leaders to remember that their freedom and security has depended upon the U.S. security umbrella for over 70 years. And they do owe an immense debt of gratitude, of course, to the United States for their own security. It's time for all yeah. European countries to step up to the plate, invest more in their own defenses, and ensure that the NATO alliance is strengthened for the next 70 years. Uh, Christy, I know you're a Democrat and you're not a big fan of Donald Trump, but on the other hand, when you see a U.S. president go to Europe and be snubbed by European leaders, doesn't it rile even you? Yeah, it's embarrassing, um, but you have to put it in context as to why this was happening. Look, these same, these very same leaders had a great deal of respect for Barack Obama. If they don't have respect, it is specifically for Donald Trump, and you need to look at why that is. He went over there like the ugly American. There was video of him <laughs> literally pushing and shoving the president of Montenegro out of the way of putting the new president of France, Macron, into this weird, bizarre, I'm a tough guy, death grip handshake. Um, you know, and then also lecturing them on something that, frankly, he doesn't really know very much about. Um, you read that tweet well, about I, I, money what, pouring what has he in. Got, hold on a That's second, Christy. That's not how what, NATO works. What, he hasn't yeah. gotten much wrong. It's true that most of the, the European countries that he put his finger on is saying you're not paying their share, fair share are not. They're supposed to pay, as mm -hmm. parts of NATO, 2% right. of their budget on defenses. And I'll, I'll throw yeah. this to Lee, but I... Okay. Frankly, I think when most Americans see the Europeans snickering at Donald Trump saying something that's true, uh, you know, he does get the last laugh, but don't you David, think? David, can I just say one more quick thing? He's, I mean, look, it's a defensible argument. It is a defensible, um, you know, argument to make. However, there is also something called 
diplomacy. When you're going to talk to these people who, as we've said, are our greatest allies, yeah. who have been with us after 9-11, maybe, okay. you, you know, massage You got your say, Christy, but I, Lee, I, I just have to say that when most Americans, diplomacy. hold on a second, Lee, most Americans, okay. I think, would much rather see a president of the United States standing up for Americans overseas than, than getting patted on the back by his European friends overseas, don't you think? You're, abs you're absolutely right. I mean, the reason that Donald Trump is president today was a lot because of his messaging, which was make America great again and put America first. And so I think that when he goes over there and speaks up for America, it's something that resonates. And I think that, the, you know, talk about diplomacy. You want to talk about diplomacy? Yeah. How about these leaders laughing at the president of the United States who has supported them over tough times? That's not diplomacy. And Niall, uh, Niall, I'll give you the last Donald word. President, yeah. president Obama, when he went over there, it's true. They all loved him. They gave him a Nobel Peace Prize before he even did anything, for God's sakes. <laughs> uh, so they, they loved the guy. Uh, but at the same time, what did that get him? What did that get him in terms of deals? What did that get, get him in terms of support? It didn't get them to pay up what they owed as their parts of NATO. Yes, that's right. And global leadership is not about being loved or being popular. It's about projecting, I think, uh, aggressively uh, U.S. interests on the world stage. And I don't think that Barack Obama did that. In fact, I think many European leaders, while superficially saying they liked Obama, viewed him as very, very uh, weak, actually. And I do think that uh, you know, the United States under President Obama did not project the kind of U.S. leadership that we needed to see. And I think we did see a very strong projection of U.S. leadership throughout the past uh, seven days on the yeah. international stage. And certainly, I think, the end of the era of leading from behind, which uh, President Obama advanced. Okay. Uh, but thank you very much, Niall, Lee, and Christy. appreciate what you are seeing uh, on the left side of the screen is the air base from which the president is going to leave his trip to come back home, uh, Sigonella Air Base in Italy. It's a naval, <coughs> excuse me, a naval air station. As you can see, a lot of people are holding cameras up, pointing uh, in the right direction. I think that's to where the president's plane has come in uh, and where he may depart from as well. So there clearly is action taking place. The president is going to be speaking to the crowd there. Again, it's Memorial Day weekend, folks. It's a perfect time to speak to our troops overseas. That's exactly what the president is going to do before he boards Air Force One and comes back home. And an explosive new report suggesting that the Obama administration is not only spying on Americans, but then sharing that information. So where 